Thailand's famous Penang curry. If you've always wanted to make this at home, then I have the perfect recipe for you. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna make our curry paste from scratch. And I love making Thai curry paste. I think it's one of the best ways to get to know a lot of different Thai ingredients and also to figure out what Thai ingredients your Asian grocer has down the road. <laughs> um, so let's start off with the chilies first. Now for most Thai red chili paste, we use the dried red chilies for this rather than the fresh. So I've had these soaking in some hot water for about 10 minutes or so. Just wanna cut them up. Now we're gonna be using a blender today uh, and I've got lots of little tips and tricks here for how we can best use the blender to make a curry paste at home because there's a few little things that might catch you up. First tip is to chop things up quite small because that's going to help your blade get everything really smooth. And then the second thing, so this chili water, just keep that for when we go to blend because we may need to moisten the mixture to help it get really smooth. You'll see what I mean a little bit later. Now the next ingredient is galangal. So galangal looks like this, similar to ginger but not. <laughs> <laughs> it has a very beautiful pine forest, citrusy, high note to its aromas and flavors. It's really worth seeking out and it freezes quite well as well. You'll see that there's little bits of pink on here as well. That's another way to tell that that's your galangal and not ginger. Now what you need to do is just peel the galangal, just a small piece, and then finely chop. Next we want some garlic and then some red Asian shallots as well. Now you can use French shallots here too. And now some lemongrass. Mm, I love that smell so much. Now what we need to do here is brew the lemongrass. Just cut that end off because it's often very tough. And then peel off these outer layers because they're also really tough and fibrous. And now finally slice. And I also want some coriander roots. So just take those off. Now, if you're using coriander at home and you're not using the roots, just stick them in the freezer until you're ready to make your curry paste. That way you're not wasting any. And now for the kaffir lime element. So this should be one of the crucial flavors for a true Thai Penang curry. And what I like to do is use both the leaves and then also the fruit itself, which is this gnarly looking guy right here. <laughs> so with the leaves, you wanna take those off the stem and then pull the stem out of the leaf as well. Roll those up and then finally slice. And then the lime itself. So the lime juice inside of here is really bitter. And I've asked and asked and asked my mom about what you can use it for in terms of food. Now she said that in her village they don't use it for food, they just use it to put in their hair, funnily enough. But um, anyway, I have not tried it in my hair, but you guys feel free. What we need here is the actual lime peel. So you wanna get as much of the peel as possible without too much of that white stuff underneath, because that will be bitter. A little bit's okay. Just need two or three slices here. Now I just want a really fine chop on this. Now I know this ingredient is going to be a bit hard for a lot of you to find. Don't worry, if you can't find the kaffir lime itself, then just use the leaves and just leave that out. But if you can get a hold of these, it really makes a big difference to the paste. And then shrimp paste. Yes, it's kind of funky smelling, but it adds a beautiful saltiness and background umami flavor to the dish. You don't even know it's there at the end. So just pop it in the paste and don't worry about it. And now for my dried spices, a little bit of coriander and some cumin. And then the last ingredient you'll find in some recipes and not others, I've done my paste with and without, but there's some peanuts here, but if you have allergies, you can totally leave these out. Won't make a huge difference. Now let's start blending. Now if we have a look here, this is one of the pitfalls of using a blender instead of a mortar and pestle to make your curry paste. So have a look and you can see that what we're getting here is just a lot of chopped ingredients. We're not getting a paste, we're not releasing or smooshing out all those beautiful essential oils and flavours and aromas from the ingredients like you would do in a mortar and pestle. So my tip is to add a little bit of liquid to this. Now a lot of people add oil. that doesn't work out quite so well because for me that then becomes like an emulsification. The oil thickens up, the ingredients thicken up and everything just becomes the wrong texture. So what you want is some of this chili soaking liquid. A couple of tablespoons first. And because this is just water, when we go to cook it out, it will eventually evaporate and cook out of the paste. So don't worry too much about how much you add. And that's better, but I can still see we're just getting a chop here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. 
And that's better. So what I can see here is that that blade is actually catching those ingredients and they seem to be turning over quicker and faster. Exactly what you want to look out for. Okay, so this is the texture that you're looking for. And this makes enough for two amounts of Penang curry, which is good because you don't want to do all that chopping just for one dinner. Share it out over two. And you can just store the unused curry paste in the freezer. Now comes the easiest part and that's the cooking. So I just need a little bit of oil and half of that curry paste. And I want this curry paste to sizzle and cook out a little bit in the oil because the heat is going to be releasing even more of the flavor and the aroma and then cooking out those raw aromatics like the garlic and the shallots. All of this contributes to flavor. That's what it's all about. Okay, so that's had a minute or so. It smells amazing. Now I'm going to add in my chicken and this is chicken thigh. You could use breast as well, but I'm going to do this the slow way. And the darker meat suits this style of Penang a little bit better. And now we add the coconut milk. And as I mentioned, there's a couple of different ways to do Penang. One is really quickly, almost like more like a stir fry style. And for that one, you can use chicken breast or prawns or seafood even. But I'm gonna go with the more traditional, slower cooked method here. And this one's really great for tougher cuts of beef or the chicken thigh. And then pop a lid on, turn the heat down and let that simmer away for half an hour. You're not supposed to be checking. Don't open the lid. Just checking. Listen to your mom. Why are you so bossy all the time? Okay, so this is smelling so amazing. Let's have a look. Ah, and that's just what we want. So this longer cooked Penang style of curry has that really nice thick sauce and some of that red oil on the top. Mm. Just perfect. Okay, now for the seasoning, because of course we haven't seasoned this yet with the fish sauce and palm sugar. I like to do it at the end. I always like to taste first, just get an idea of how things are going. Now for the palm sugar, you'll see that it usually comes in these hard blocks. So you just need to shave that sugar so it dissolves quickly into the curry. And then the fish sauce as well. Let's see how we're going. Mm, almost there. To me, this style of curry should have a little bit more sweetness than usual, so I'm going to put a little bit more palm sugar in. Mm. And now we're floating in that territory of the amazing. You know, the thing that I love about Thai curries is you bring all these huge flavors like fish sauce and galangal and kaffir lime leaves and palm sugar and chilies, and you create something so harmonious and so beautiful at the end. Mm, that is just delicious. Now to serve this up, dish out the curry first. Ah, look at how thick and luscious that is. And then a little drizzle of extra coconut cream on the top. And as I said at the beginning, the kaffir lime leaf flavor is really important here. So I want some extra finely sliced leaves on the top and just a couple of slices of chili. And there you go, guys, a classic Thai Penang chicken curry. Oh, one of my favorites. I hope you love it too. Mm. That flavor, so amazing. Mm. It's just an explosion of everything that's wonderful about Thai food. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one, and that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks, guys.